What's going on, everybody? All right, it's um, 4.58 Caribbean time. I guess New York time is like four in the morning. Uh, I got up to take some meds and I was like, all right, I haven't been around so you guys, so let me just pop up, make a couple of videos, kind of answer some emails, talk about some stuff here. There's one um, email I got yesterday. It's from Tony. Um, Tony sent me a X post um, regarding the Federal Reserve requiring XRP for global payment solutions. So I'll, I'll two seconds, I'll read it here. Federal Reserve is looking to acquire XRP as a global payment solution with the institutional, oh, sorry, with the International Monetary Fund supporting cross border payments and cryptocurrency adoption through a new payment platform compatible with Ripple XRP and Stella XLM. Um, okay, here's the deal. That's not really new news. Let me explain why. There's two entities in the world that facilitate the money movement, or let me just put it this way, the dollar mo money movement in the world. That is the IMF, lovingly referred to as the International Mafia Fund, um, but the International Monetary Fund out of DC. It's a creature of DC. And the Bank of International Settlements, that's the bank for banks. So those two entities have already selected Ripple um, as their cross-border payment platform. Now the IMF has identified Ripple and XRP, sorry, Ripple XRP and Stella Lumens XLM as the stable coins to facilitate their cross-border payments. So you say, but what does the Federal Reserve have to do with that? Simple. The Federal Reserve only has power and authority inside the United States. When it has to move money anywhere in the world, it has to go through two entities, IMF, which is then tied to BIS. So it's not like they have much choice in it. It's like, um, it's like if you have a Toyota, perfect example. Let's say you bought your Toyota in Ohio and then you decide to move to Baja, Mexico. You still have a warranty in it, but you have a warranty with Toyota North America. Do you understand? Not Toyota in Latin America. So you would have to contact Toyota and do the whole process of the changeover because Toyota North America's warranty is not valid in Toyota Latin America, Mexico, or Panama, wherever you drive it to. So you would have to deal with the entity that would, in a sense, honor the, the warranty overseas. So the Federal Reserve has no choice. If the Federal Reserve needs to do any type of money movement with, let's just say, I don't know, United Emirates or, you know, you know Singapore, or any of those kind of places, it's going to have to conform to the money delivery system on that side. And since the world is in a process of like de-dollarization, XRP and XLM are a choice um, to go to. And that's going to be a big thing in the future. I don't think a lot of people understand that because let's say, for example, you know, like America is picking up oil production now. Like we're, we're pumping oil, not at the scale we should be at all. But they're saying that we're, we're doing it such high levels. Yeah, you go from zero to, to 5%, that's high. And we could be doing 100%. Anyway, the thing is, eventually countries overseas are going to say, we don't ex want to accept dollars. You're going to have to pay us in a different form or different currency. That's where XRP comes in. So as far as the future being XRP and XLM for payments, I don't doubt it. It's, it's the bridge currency. Tell me another currency that can do that. You know, it's it's not possible. Um, what they give you is Bitcoin. Send the payment today, get it next month. It's not going to work. There's nothing else right now that could be used as a bridge currency in that capacity, that speed, that cost effect. And it's already an accepted, an accepted standard. Yeah. So yeah, XRP, the Federal Reserve, and all the entities, we already got that covered. So more to come.